All right, so before we can start filling in any of the answers, you have to get this missing side. So how would we do that? To get the one that's missing. Good, thank you. Pythagorean theorem, good. Um, X squared plus two squared equals 10 squared. And I called it X, you can call it A, you can call it B, call it whatever letter of the alphabet you want. Um, but you gotta work that out. So that'll be X squared plus four equals 100. And so X squared equals 96. And so you have to come up with two numbers that multiply to be 96. One of them's gotta be a perfect square, but you get a calculator so you can try 96 divided by some things. I think, I was gonna say, I think four works, but there's one that's bigger than four, is it 16? Yeah, you want the largest one possible. So it's 16 times six. And so the reduced answer is four square root of six. Once you have that, um, you can start filling all of these out. And if you haven't memorized Sokotoa yet, you have until next class, bless you, we're gonna hand you a quiz to do that. So do you see how theta, your little Easter egg thing, that Greek letter theta is right here? That means this is your point of view. That means like you are here on the map. So which side is the opposite of that? Two is opposite. And that means four square root of six is adjacent. 10 is hypotenuse. If you're going to be able to figure that out, you don't have to label them. I just did that so that they're written up here. Uh, now, I usually write these out and then I come back and do like any rationalizing that I need to do. Sign would be what over what? If you're standing here, yeah, it would be 2 over 10, which reduces to 1 fifth. Perfect. And then to get cosecant, you just flip that over. You can write 5 over 1 or just 5 is fine as well, except either one of those. All right, cosine would be what over what? Again, you're standing here. Good, four square root of six over 10. We're tired today, okay. And then you have to reduce the four tenths. So four tenths will be, good, thank you, two fifths. And then for secant, you're going to flip that over. All right, and then tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it is two over four square root of six. And you need to reduce the two fourths. So that would be one half. What happens when the windows open? And then for cotangent, you flip that over. So same thing I said about cosecant. You can write two square root of six over one if you want to, or just two square root of six. Now there's two of them we have to go back and rationalize. What's one of them that we're gonna have to do another step? Good, secant. You would multiply by square root of six. And so that would give you five square root of six over, now this part would be six, but then times two, so 12. Six times two is 12, so what we did there. What's the other one that we need like to do another step? Good, tangent, same thing. You're gonna multiply by square root of six. And so you get one square root of six over, again, it comes out to 12. So what I do is I write them out and then I'll go back and there's two that you would have to rationalize. There's always gonna be two where that happens. Um, and then I'll just fix that at the end. So we'll do number two together and then I'll kind of be quiet and let you guys try the other ones. For these, the picture's just not drawn for you. So like we did with the word problems, you're gonna draw your own triangle. I just believe in you. Um, and we're gonna do a good bit with this today, labeling the A, B, and C. It really doesn't matter where A and B go. But you know how in your a squared plus b squared equals c squared, c has to be the hypotenuse. And the capital letters go for the angles, the lowercase letters go for the sides and they go across from each other. So the right angle is capital C and then the hypotenuse is baby C. 
They go across from each other like that. So the angles are the capitals and the sides are the lowercase. It really doesn't matter where A and B go. Like those are interchangeable. So this is capital A and that's baby A. And this is capital B and that's baby B. So let's see, what were we given? Um, we were given angle B is 28 degrees. And then side A is eight. So I'm just going to erase that and put an eight there. And I gave you a list off to the side of everything that's missing. First thing I'm looking for is angle A. How could we get that? We don't even have to really write anything down for that. That's going to happen in the calculator. What would I type in to get angle A? Yeah, now it would be 180 minus the other two. But as a shortcut, if this one's 90, then what's left for the other two? 90, right? So you can just do 90 minus 28. Uh, but if you want to stick with that 180 minus the other two thing, that's that's what we're doing there. So 62 degrees is angle A. And if you're like, hey, what work do we have to show for that? There is, actually isn't any. It just happened in the calculator. All right, so you can just write the answer for that one. All right, so now let's get baby B. So we want to find this one. Where's your point of view? I was about ready to say it, but I'm going to ask you instead. Which angle is your point of view? They're like, you are here. B, big B, good. Right there. So that means little b is the opposite. Eight is the what? Adjacent. So sine, cosine, or tangent uses opposite and adjacent. Okay, good. So now this you do have to write. Tangent 28 equals b over eight. That I need to see. That's the work. Then you can type it in your calculator. So how would we type that one? Get tangent. Eight tangent 28 and three decimal points. Last unit, I gave you a pass on that because it was the first time we started talking about it. This time I am gonna take off if you don't do three decimal points. Again, you won't all go on to AP Calculus, but for those of you that do, they'll give you nothing. They won't even do partial credit. You just won't get the points if you don't do three decimal points. So I'm trying to get you ready for that. <clears throat> all right, and then the last one. This is still our point of view. Eight is adjacent, C is hypotenuse. So sine, cosine, or tangent for adjacent and hypotenuse. Cosine, good. Cosine 28 equals eight over C. So that's the work that I need to see there. And then how would we type that one? Good, perfect. Your variable's in the denominator, so you're gonna divide. It's eight divided by cosine 28. I was waiting to see if someone asked that. So once you get little b, you have this side is 8. You have this side as 4.253. Technically, you could do Pythagorean theorem to get the other side, but I recommend against it for two reasons. Number one, do you remember that store alpha a and store alpha b we did last time? You would have to do that, which means a lot more button pushing. And secondly, you don't want to reuse an answer you found if you don't have to, because what if this is wrong? If you use it to get the next answer, then your next answer is also wrong. So in theory, yes, you can do that, but I recommend against it for those two reasons. Okay, it's more button pushing. And if you made a mistake on the first one, then the next one's gonna be wrong too. It's like domino effect. So for this one, again, it doesn't matter where A and B go. Um, but baby C has to be the hypotenuse, so capital C has to be the right angle. So we said little c was 12, and again, it doesn't really matter where these go. I'm just putting A here and B here to be consistent with that one, but it, they're interchangeable. It doesn't matter. All right, uh, baby B is 4.3, and then uh, baby A is missing, all right? So over here, I'm just going to find it in the order it is on here. It kind of doesn't matter what order you do it. A is your point of view. So that means 4.3 is the what? Adjacent, good, and 12 is hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse means cosine. So cosine of A equals 4.3 over 12. Now that's a little different. How will I type that one? Inverse, good vocabulary, inverse. How do I type an inverse? Like what actual button on here? Second cosine 
It'll put cosine inverse on there. 4.3 divided by 12. I got 69.002 degrees. Okay, now we're going to find B. That means this is now your point of view. You're now up here. So 4.3 is now the what? Opposite, 12 is hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse means sine. So sine of B equals 4.3 over 12. So I'm going to do sine inverse 4.3 divided by 12. I got 20.997. Can anyone confirm that? Like, okay, perfect. 20.997. All right, and then baby A, I have the other two sides, so I would just do Pythagorean theorem. So A squared plus 4.3 squared. I'm just going to type that in the calculator. I got 18.49 equals 12 squared is 144. So if I subtract that over, I got 125.51. I just put that in the calculator. I don't know what that is. And then your last step would be square root. You can't split that. Like up here, we split 96 and got two square roots. You can't do that with this. I'm just going to type square root of 125.51. I got 11.203. The only one that's going to have roots in it is that first question. All the rest are going to be all these crazy decimals, which is super fun for me to grade, by the way. <laughs> all the decimals to three places. The good news is these usually go well and everyone's answers are usually right. So it tends to be okay. All right, and then these were the word problems that we did last time. So we're gonna draw a right triangle and you have to have a bit of an imagination. A person is looking up at the top of a cliff. Okay, so the person is here, all right? This is my version of a person. All right, this is the cliff. Angle of elevation is 75 degrees. That's gonna go there. We're standing 35 meters away. So where does the 35 go? Bottom? And it's meters, so be careful with your units. How tall is the cliff? So X goes there. Sine, cosine, or tangent? Tangent. Tangent? 75 equals X over 35. And then you're going to type that in. It would be 35 tangent 75. So 130.621 meters. I honestly feel like the word problems are in a way easier than like the ones on the other side of the paper. It's three, it's three points. You have a picture, a setup, and then putting it in the calculator. All right, last one. Uh, <laughs> did anyone notice like the Seinfeld reference I was going for on this problem? Jerry looks out his window to the sidewalk below. It says angle of depression is 47. Do you remember us talking about how in theory the, the ground and the sky are parallel? The 47 should technically go here, but where did I tell you to put it? Yeah, same place as the angle of elevation. Does anyone remember what those are called from geometry? They're so smart. All right, alternate interior. That won't be on the quiz, but that's just why they're congruent. All right, uh, he sees George walking. Jerry, the, Jerry's window is on the fifth floor, 50 feet above the ground. Where does 50 go? Opposite. Yeah, opposite the 47. It's the vertical part. He's up in his building. And this one's feet. How far away uh, is George from Jerry's building? So X goes there. So again, this one is tangent. 47 equals 50 over X, opposite over adjacent. And so that one you're going to type... 50 divided by tangent 47. I got 46.625 feet.